So one of the things I learned today is if you don't fall asleep until 3.30 in the morning and you wake up three hours late, everything is three hours behind schedule, and when you go to start shooting a video, everybody can see you're wearing the same clothes as yesterday. Hi there, my name is Athel, and this vlog episode is going to be all about coffee. 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 Alrighty, coffee. So one of the things I talked about briefly in yesterday's episode is that we live in this giant commercial ecosystem uh, that wants us to be obedient little drones that are going out and just spending money. So a coffee is a great example of this. Drink overpriced coffee. There you go. That's thirty-seven dollars. Wow, awesome. So one of the things my wife and I used to do an awful lot of is go for walks. And we, I mean, we still love going for walks, but we had this mile and a half circuit around the neighborhood that we would, we would walk. And about halfway around the circuit was, you know, fancy coffee shop and we would get a fancy coffee. And between the two of us, it usually ran about $6, a cup for me, a cup for her. And $6 is not that much for a little treat, but then when it becomes part of your daily routine, well, then you're spending $42 a week, $180 a month, and $2,190 a year. And $2,190 a year is a completely insane figure for a cup of coffee each. I'm pretty sure if someone said to me, hey, you can spend $2,000 and be in a cup of coffee of the day club, I would have said no, because that would have been such an insane amount of money to pay. So we used to do this for a long time, and then eventually we just said, we, we're just spending way too much on coffee. This is absolutely ridiculous. And we broke down and bought one of those Keurig things. So if you don't know what a Keurig is, it is just an automatic coffee maker, and you have disposable little K-cups filled with coffee, so you make exactly one cup of coffee. And that's a lot cheaper than going to a fancy coffee store. But each one of those little K-cups is about 50 cents each, and if you drink about four cups of coffee between the two of you, well, that's $2 a day, about $14 a week, about $16 a month, and $730 a year. And that was fine, and it worked, it worked for us for, for quite a while, and then eventually our Keurig machine broke down and as we are sort of planning to move at some point in the near future, we didn't really want to break down and spend like 120, 140 bucks on something that might not move with us. So we said, okay, let's try a French press because it's small, it's cheap, and we can just toss it away when we move. And the French press coffee is actually, you know, comes in a bag, you scoop it out, and it is actually costing us about 50 cents a day for about, you know, four cups of coffee. 50 cents a day, 3.50 a week, $15 a month, and 182.50 a year to have the same amount of coffee that we had before when we were buying fancy coffee. So 182.50 versus 2,190. So I'll come back to the French press. Let's talk about the fancy coffee. The fancy coffee. Now, ironically, the fancy coffee from the fancy coffee store is one of the slowest, most expensive, least convenient, and most annoying things to actually get. It means you have to get up in the morning, you have to get dressed, you have to get in your car, you have to drive down to the store, you have to stand in line, you have to fish money out of your wallet, and then you have to hope that the person on the other side of the counter is going to get your order right. And it is so enraging when they get your order wrong because you've spent so much effort into getting there and it is so expensive to buy that when they get it wrong, it is incredibly frustrating. One cream, two sugars, how hard is it? You've got one job, all you do is make coffee. So it costs a lot, plus you're addicted, but often it's really more of a, an emotional addiction, an emo, you know, emotional craving. Oh, Papa. Mm. A sense of being validated that someone you know in your life actually 
understands you and gets you and can remember something about you. You know, when you're when the people serving you coffee remember who you are by name and by face and they can start making the coffee before you've even ordered it because they know your order. That's a really powerful thing that can affect you. And you know it's really powerful because sometimes when your favorite coffee, coffee people aren't there. But I don't want another person to make my coffee. I, I, I want Tiffany to make my coffee. <clears throat> Alrighty. Alright, we'll see if one of those work. Alrighty. And if you've ever tried to actually just give up coffee and, and pull yourself off it completely, very often it's like it's, it's hard to do. But interestingly, it's not often the caffeine itself that's the true addiction. It's the sugar that gets put into the coffee. If you've been getting giant store-bought fancy coffees, what's really addictive is like the giant pumps of hazelnut sweetener that goes into the coffee. So when you stop going there and you stop drinking it, it's not that you're having caffeine withdrawal, it's that you have low blood sugar and you're addicted to the sugar as much as the coffee. I, idea is if you ever want to come off coffee, try getting off the sugar first and you'll see how amazingly easy it is to take or leave the caffeine. So anyway, we stopped doing the store, the fancy store thing. Um, we got the Keurig, we used it for a while, it crapped out and then we brought the French press. So let me tell you the most interesting thing about the French press. We actually use the exact same brand of coffee we'd been using in the K-Cups in the French press. We just came to a default setting of this is our coffee. And let me tell you, this exact same brand of coffee tasted so much better in the French press compared to the Keurig. Um, did it take longer to make? Yes, it did. It took time for the water to boil. And then we would have to pour the water in the French press and let it sit. It was a sort of a, a slower, more methodical approach to making coffee. But let me tell you, it just tastes so much better. It's got, it's stronger, it's got more of an aroma, and it's, it's you know, more satisfying. And then, of course, just the more I thought about it, you know, the, the K-Cup thing is nice, it's quick, it's easy, it's convenient. And it's just, it's just because the only reason to use a K-Cup over a French press is because you're impatient. Because you have to have things right now. Because you're tra caught up in the whole instant gratification. You know, I, I'll, I'll have something crappy, but I, as long as I'll have it right now. It's the whole dopamine thing. It's the need to be updated endlessly. It's, it's the checking my phone version of coffee where the French press is a little more communal. We make coffee together. It's a whole lot cheaper. It's reusable. It doesn't have the waste. So anyway, summing up, I really don't care if you get the fancy store coffee. I don't care if you use a Keurig. I don't think I'm a better person because I use a French press. I'm not on a mission to get everyone to use French presses. All I'm saying is that there are, there are choices here that you are probably making completely unconsciously. That there's a pattern of interaction that you're probably just falling into. All I'm really saying is be mindful. So anyway, that is today's episode. I do this each and every day and I will catch you tomorrow. Hey, welcome to the video. And I did not sleep until... I'll be back.